Hey there everybody, Sage Popham here, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism. And you know, I recently had a question that I thought I would share with the greater community in regards to um, working with plants to support children that uh, in conventional medicine are diagnosed as being ADD or ADHD. Um, I feel like I've got uh, some opinions on, on that and um, definitely have seen the detrimental effects that conventional treatment of these, quote, diseases uh, are and have had on people that were on them for a very long time, not to mention a lot of kind of the, the psychological and emotional detriment that being labeled ADD or ADHD can happen, uh, can you know cause within children, especially in the context of our conventional educational system. Uh, I think using plants to address these um, dynamics can be so beneficial for children on so many different levels, not just helping them you know, navigate our standard educational model, which isn't always suitable to all learning types, um, but just helping to k keep these kids off of some of these stronger medications that they're put on and some of the detrimental side effects that they can have, not to mention helping parents navigate some of this territory. So there was a question as, uh, that a student brought to my attention recently, and uh, I thought it was some, something that I hadn't really talked about before, so I thought I would share it with all of you here um, on our various channels. So enjoy this discussion here on herbs and approach for working with ADD and ADHD. Question number three comes from Elling is asking about wondering if you can offer plant remedies and holistic practices for folks dealing with ADD. Gutukoa comes to mind and of course a mindfulness practice but I love to hear your take on undressing this condition. Yeah great great question there Elling. Um, so it's interesting I, and I'm not sure if you asked it but I actually uh, I did a Materia Medica monthly webinar the other day <clears throat> and someone was asking about Bacopa for ADHD in children. And so I will kind of go off of that a little bit here. Um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I mean, to just maybe get on a soapbox a little bit. Um, I think it's really unfortunate that doctors are so quick to uh, say that a child has a disease um, because they have a hard time paying attention in our very linear reductionistic boxed in educational system that basically only works for certain um, certain learning types, right? Certain people that learn well in a standard school environment. But I think it's important to understand that you know, different people learn in different ways, right? Some people are very hands-on and tactile. Some people are more visual learners. Some people are more auditory learners. Um, so it's, it's unfortunate because we basically create this box and say, this is how you need to learn. This is what you need to learn. And if you don't fit in that box, then you have a disease and we're gonna put you on Ritalin, you know? And, you know, I've had family members and friends that were put on Ritalin from a really young age and we're on it for a really long time and it really kind of messed them up, you know, and it took them a long time to overcome some of the problems that it created for them, both physically and kind of psychologically and emotionally as well. So I think the more that we can, A, prevent kids from having to get on those drugs, the better, because they really, um, in the long run, create a lot more problems than they do solve any problems. And, um, and to just encourage kids that there's not necessarily something wrong with them, right? That just that they learn a little differently. And I think, you know, it would be great if the school system could really recognize that there are different learning styles. <clears throat> um, that being said, what we see, you know, ADD, attention deficit disorder, and ADHD, att attention deficit hyperactive disorder. So hard time concentrating and focusing, right? So this is usually where we work with remedies in a couple different categories of herbalism. One would be 
are nootropic agents, which are plants that generally support cognitive function, uh, oftentimes through nervous system effects and oftentimes through increasing blood flow into the brain. And then we also see nervine sedatives, so herbs that maybe will help calm the mind down, settle kind of a high level of energy so that one can focus more clearly. You know, when I think of kind of, I guess, outside the dominion of ADD and ADHD, just thinking of cognitive difficulty in general, uh, I kind of tend to think of it in a couple different categories. Like you've got the one side of it, which is the person that can't concentrate because they're just really spaced out, right? Their mind is like, whoa, or they get really distracted or, you know, they're like, oh, I'm going to work on this. Oh, look at the butterflies. And I love that color. And I used to have a t-shirt that was that color. Where is that shirt? I guess I'll go look for it. And, you know, next thing you know, they're like cleaning their kitchen or something. <laughs> it's like all over the place, like very scattered. Uh, we might think of that as more of a vata type cognitive challenge and then you have the like groggy foggy hazy like trying to see through cotton balls and cotton balls in the brain like uh, that type of brain fog right so it's not so much like distraction or spaced out but it's more like a mental sluggishness and fatigue right so that's where I kind of see those two different realms of herbs that support cognitive function, the ones that are really spaced out and kind of scattered and all over the place are going to really benefit from more nervines, gentle nervines, because you don't want to shift them too far so that they're tired and can't focus. And then the, the brain fog, heavy, sluggish feeling is really benefited by circulatory stimulants and bringing more blood flow up into the brain. So that's kind of where I divide them. The circulatory stimulants, you know, we see things like rosemary is really excellent. Um, ginkgo is really excellent. It actually is thinning the blood. It's not so much driving blood, but it's more thinning it. <clears throat> um, and bacopa is really excellent here as well. We also have valerian. Valerian is actually a cerebral stimulant. So valerian is bringing more blood flow up into the brain, but obviously it's also quite distinctly sedative. So we usually have to be a little bit cautious with valerian. Um, and then, you know, on the nervine side, I really like the more gentle nervines, especially if we're talking about working with children. Things like lavender and lemon balm, um, Tulsi can be really nice. Um, linden blossom uh, or tilia is really nice here as well. And, uh, you know, they say also kind of from, I guess, more of a energetic standpoint, so to speak, working with the heart is really excellent here too, because it's, it's kind of a sign of mental overactivity. And the more that we can bring someone into the heart, we bring them into more of a parasympathetic state. We bring them into more of a settled, singular focused state of consciousness rather than a very stimulated all over the place state of consciousness. So that's where things like, again, linden, really excellent motherwort can be really good there. Lemon balm, really great. And then hawthorn, actually. Um, I've heard hawthorn berry and flower can be very excellent for folks with ADD and ADHD, simply by virtue of bringing someone down into their heart as an organ of perception. Uh, Goto Cola, as you noted here, um, is really, really excellent. Um, I, it's probably my favorite herb, very safe for children, um, mild but powerful, right? Very safe for kids, and but very noticeable. And I like Goto Cola because it has a gentle nerving effect. It does ever so gently calm the nervous system down, but it promotes kind of this alert awareness that's also peaceful and calm, which to me is the most optimal state of consciousness for any type of mental focusing, uh, studying, thinking, uh, but also spiritual practice, as you said, mindfulness and meditation and things like that. Very, very good there, go to cola, and it is classically paired with calamus root, vacha, acorus calamus. Very great for the foggy, dull, 
whole type um, difficult cognition. So those are some remedies that I would suggest. You know, the other thing is I would also wonder if possibly a food intolerance dynamic might be present there. Um, you know, if, if someone's eating an intolerant food and it's stimulating their immune system in a systemic, excuse me, inflammatory response, it's going to be stimulating cortisol secretions too, which can be stimulating. Um, so that could be maybe the H part in the ADHD. Um, but also one of the main complaints of folks with <clears throat> food intolerance is mental fatigue, right? Difficulty concentrating, difficulty focusing and all of that. So that could definitely be a contributing factor. So it is worth looking into maybe screening for a food intolerance. Um, and that could be a other useful approach from a holistic standpoint. So yeah, great question there, Elling. Hopefully that helps um, in your journey of supporting people with that.